Hey everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we looked at how to create shapes with SVG and set their attributes. To create a data visualization, we're going to use Svelte to create those SVGs and set the attributes based on the data we have. So to show you how to do that, I've loaded some data here, as you can see. So this is just a simple list of entry points to New York City and their daily traffic numbers. In JavaScript, it's typical to represent tabular data just like this. We have an array, and inside the array, we have objects that have common field names, in this case, name and traffic. In a full-fledged data visualization, we would typically separate the data from the code. But to get started, I think it's easier to just see it all in one place. In a Svelte component, the script tag is run when the component is initialized. That means the bridge traffic variable is available to us down here. We can access it with special Svelte template tags. The one I'm going to use is each. So each bridge traffic has bridge. For each one, I'm going to create a paragraph. And I'm just going to say OK. So now we have one OK for each of these bridges. I'm going to use bridge.name instead. And you can see a list of the bridges here. So to create a bar plot, all we have to do is use this control structure to create an SVG rectangle for each of these bridges. So I'm going to start by creating my SVG element. During development, I like to outline the SVG element so I can see it. So I'm going to use a style tag. I make it pretty light. And I'm just going to make it bigger again. I don't need this anymore. OK, so now I have my drawing surface. So I'm going to loop over each of the bridges. Again, that's pound sign each. Bridge traffic as bridge. And for each of these, I'm going to create a rectangle, which will be bridge traffic. I'm just going to randomly kind of pick a scale Divide, I'll start by dividing by 1,000. We'll see what that gets us. Um, so these don't have a height yet. And they don't have fill color. I'm going to make them red. OK, so here the bars are. As you can see, they're all on top of each other because I haven't given them any position attributes. But if I right click to inspect, you can see that they've all been created here. They're just on top of each other. To give them a y value, I'm going to take a second value from this each loop. That's going to give me the index. So that's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, up until the last. I'm going to use that to set the y value. So I will say i times 20. Now you can see these each have their own line. But it's not super useful yet, because we don't actually know which bridge is associated with each bar. So I'm going to add a text element for each. So as you can see, the text is now here, but it also needs to be positioned. I could use y values on the text to position it as well. So it looks something like this. And you can see we still need a little bit of work, but the same principles applied. But it's a little bit neater to just put these both in a group and position the group. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to set the transform value based on a JavaScript expression. So rather than double quotes, I'm going to use a curly bracket. That tells Svelte to interpret everything inside of it as a JavaScript expression. I'm going to use template strings, which in JavaScript start with the back tick. I'm going to use translate to position the text. For now, I only care about the y value, so I'm going to give it 0 for the x and for the y, i times 20. Then I can get rid of these y values so that they're not applied twice. OK, I get the same result. 
Now it's time to get something a bit nicer here. First of all, the text is positioned starting at the top of each bar. That's not what I want. So what I'm going to do is give these text tags a y value. I'm going to give them a y of 5 to put them in the middle of the height. I'm going to swap these elements so that it's more obvious that the text is in the middle of the bar, specifically the baseline of the text, or the bottom of most of the letters is in the middle of the bar. The letters with the senders actually go down below the middle. So what we're going to do is, instead of positioning the text based on the baseline, we're going to position the text based on the middle. And for that, we can use the dominant baseline attribute. And it's say dominant baseline equals middle. And now you can see it's more in line. Now the bars should start after the text. So we want to use the text as a label to the left of the bars. So I'm going to do a couple steps to do that. First, I'm going to add some space on the x-axis here. Now let's give it 200 to start. Remember, the origin here is moved with this translate. To make that a little more obvious, I can use something that I like to call a trace circle. So that's going to just be a little circle with no x or y given to it. And I'll make it black. So this shows us where the origin point 0, 0 represents in a group. This group here is translated, which effectively means that the origin point 0, 0 is moved within that group. So this is just showing us where it's moved to. So what I want to do is instead of starting the text, which is actually positioned at this origin point right now, um, well, five down from it because we set this y value. Um, but on the x-axis, it's, it's at this origin point. So instead of starting the text at this, I want to end at this point. So to do that, I use a property called text anchor. If I set text anchor to end, then I get this nice little right alignment. This text is still a little bit clipped here, so I'm just going to add 10. This text is also cut off, so I'm just going to bump this up to 300. That gives us space here. Just as a matter of preference, I'm going to make this text a little bit smaller. So that's just font size. And I'm going to bump it to the left a bit so that there's a little bit of a margin. There we go. That's our first data visualization with Svelte and SVG. One thing that would make this visualization better is if we could actually tell what the values are. One way to do that would be to add an x-axis that shows tick marks. But a simpler way is just to add a little piece of text at the end of each bar that shows the value. So my exercise for you is to pause this video and see if you can modify this to add a little piece of text at the end that shows that value. When you come back, I'll show you how I do it. OK, hopefully you've been able to take a crack at the exercise. I'm going to show you how I do it. So I'm going to copy this text tag. Instead of bridge name, I'm going to use bridge traffic. So now you can see the number here. Obviously, it's not positioned right. Uh, I'm not going to use text anchor end anymore. And I want to move it to the end of the bar. So that bar is positioned with this. I'm just going to give it as the x property. So there it is. I'm going to bump it up a little bit. And I think it would be nice if it was a little bit faded. So I'm going to use fill equals, let's try AAA. One more thing, it would be nice if there were commas separating these. So I'm going to do dot two locale string, which is just a little JavaScript trick. There we go. Now we have a nice little bar plot that we can read. One last thing I want to do is just sort these in order of traffic. That's just some JavaScript sorting. I need to pass a comparator. Uh, I'd actually rather have it descending, so I'm just going to swap these. There we go. That's all for this lesson. Next lesson, we'll look at how to make a scatter plot.